Hi, I'm my Lala Suji, soon to be a former ETH student, and welcome to the first video of How to ETH 101. And in this video, I will be talking about the things that you should know before or while applying to ETH. Before starting, uh, as an international student, I will be telling the things for the international applicants. Since I am a master's student, I was a master's student. <laughs> I will be talking about master's application. So, if we agree, let's get started. So we have this generic list that almost all universities ask for, starting with your transcript, diploma, CV, motivation letter, reference letters, two of them, TOEFL or IELTS score, and finally GRE score. For you to make a comparison, uh, while I was applying for the transcript, I guess the important thing is the GPA, and those times my GPA was around 3.6. Uh, diploma, I didn't have my diploma because I was still having my bachelor's education. Instead, I had this document uh, telling that I have completed this much ECTS credits and this much I'm going to and since this date I'm a student and it's expected for me to get graduated on such date. I don't remember the date. <laughs> for CV, I have this generic CV that I start with my education. That time it was only my high school and university. And then my experience that had my summer internships and student assistantship at the university. Then comes awards and honors and then projects and research that I've done in university that were related to my application. And extracurricular activities, so the societies that I was in and the conferences that I went to, that sort of stuff. And finally I finish it with my skills and interests where I tell I know these programs, I know these languages, and these are the things that I like to do in my free time. And then motivation letter, which was the hardest part for me, but basically I talked about why I really want to get education at ETH, what I can add to ETH and what ETH can add to me. So this kind of mutual relationship kind of letter. It was hard. Reference letters, I got them from my professors at my university in my department, which I worked with and got uh, courses from. They were researchers that are known in their field and I guess this is a positive thing for your application. And for TOEFL and IELTS, I got TOEFL and the minimum requirement was to get a hundred and I got a hundred. <laughs> and finally for GRE, actually in 2017, it wasn't required for mechanical engineering department applicants to send their GRE score and so I didn't send. But you can find the minimum uh, scores again for GRE in the website. And apart from these, Depending on your department, there may be additional uh, things or maybe that department doesn't look for GRE score or something else. So please go and check on the website, it's the most accurate information. And finally the application fee that is 150 francs, which I find a bit much because I mean there are applicants from some certain countries that this amount may be too much, but unfortunately this is the case for the most of the universities. I mean also the tests, GRE, TOEFL, IELTS, all of them were very expensive examinations. I don't find it fair, but this is the case. Oh, also, while you're applying, you can also apply for excellence scholarship, which supplies you a certain amount of money during your education, and it is actually enough. And for that, you need to write a pre-proposal of your master thesis. This doesn't need to be your final master thesis that you do, so you're not saying that I will do this for sure. It's an additional thing for them to see what you know and should you receive the scholarship. Well, let's come to the things that ETH asks for in the application different than the other universities. The thing that took the most time in my application was to write down all the <laughs> write down this short description of all the courses that I've taken and the books that I've used in those uh, courses. 
<laughs> all of them. That was a weird part of the application for me that I didn't do for any other application of mine. But if you really would like to become an ETH student, you're doing it. When I was applying, I was asked to supply my high school diploma, translate it, and this translation made by authorized people. That was also a thing that wasn't asked from any other universities that I was applying to. And finally, the part that I really don't understand, <laughs> that we had to send all our documents in hard copy form, basically posting it to Switzerland to ETH in Zurich. And also, while you're applying, you need to select a tutor, which uh, needs to approve your courses that you're going to take in your master's education. And you need to select three. One of them will be your tutor, but in case the first professor that you really wanted to be your tutor has a full quota, then the second person on your list will be your tutor. And for that, you need to know your tutor. So go on the web page, see all the professors, read about your background, so that you'll be working with someone you really would like to, in any case. Another question that I got frequently is that, does it really help if I send an email to the professor beforehand? Actually, uh, different than PhD applications, this is a master's application, professors are not part of accepting students. Because, actually, <laughs> in Switzerland, bachelor takes three years, and actually, you are are not seen as professionally qualified to do your job after bachelor's but after master's. That's why it is different from other countries that you're applying to. If you really want to, you can send emails to professors but, uh, but I don't think that that will help a lot. And this is also the answer that all of the students that I know that sent an email to their professors, they're getting answers like I really would like to work with you, but it is not up to me. Let's see if you make it, we can work together, thank you for your letter, goes on like that. <laughs> I can give you a timeline. I completed my online application at 8 of December 2017, and then I got such an email saying that, yes, we got your application, but we will not take it into account until we get the hard copy until this date. They received my documents on 14th of December and they sent you such an email so that you're sure that they got the hard copy and you're not having heart attacks whether they got it or not. And since it is end of December, it is Christmas time, they are having holidays. And then on 6th of January, I got such an email saying that my application had been forwarded. So I guess things are working in its own way. 19th of February 2018, I got this email saying that I didn't get my scholarship, even though I didn't know whether I had been accepted or not. And actually this email doesn't mean that you have been accepted, but you didn't have the scholarship. After kind of one weekish, uh, on 28th of February, I got my letter saying that I had been offered a place at ETH. I was so happy. <laughs> and I hope you as an applicant watching this, we'll also receive this letter, email, and also scholarship email in a positive sense. And in the next video, I will be explaining what you should do after you got the acceptance. And then how much does it cost to live in Switzerland as an ETH student, and ETH itself, life in Zurich, and what is waiting for you after the graduation. I hope this was helpful and see you on the next video.